anytime I speak, I speak to facts. If you have other facts, you can controvert me. But a lot of people, because of their own political biases and leaning, they say, oh, you're not objective, be neutral. What the heck is being neutral? Fact is commonsensical. It's as simple as that. I present the fact to you with common sense. All right? If you have a better argument, controvert my fact with a better argument. I like argument. I like logic. As a, you're biased. You're, you're, I don't care for any political party. All I care for is the truthfulness of the Nigerian process and being in the vanguard of having a solid democracy in our country. And that's all I stand for. And I don't care for any political party because I see the political class as one. So these are just the facts of the matter I have stated empirically. So this is just to give you guys a look. Something big is coming. Something that a lot of people do not expect. You know the Nigerian Labour Congress, the trade union, they are part of the Labour Party. But a lot of people don't know. And they have released um, a press statement. They said that they are going to shut down Nigeria and they will go on strike. For the reason that INEC is now trained the court order. INEC do not want to obey the court order because they knew that a lot of ma manipulation and a lot of you know fraudulent activities that they carry out during presidential election um, will not allow them. Uh, to just expose or hand over the materials to the Labour Party to inspect. Definitely, um, Labour Party, they are going to find out so many official things that they have done. So because of that, they are trying to delay the inspection of the material, which is against the court order that they have given the first time. So something great is coming, but people have not understand. My name is Okocha Happy Marcel. And now, the controversial and the most loving journalist in Nigeria, um, Oseni Rofai, has also criticized INEC, saying that they are not saying the truth. Listen to what he said in this video. Just to be told, INEC had perhaps this time requested that if they couldn't get their hands on, you know, the beavers, uh, to be able to refigure they will not have elections, which I think is cheap blackmail because the court had granted the parties before now the ability to be able to inspect electoral materials. And even before now, INEC wasn't ready for these elections. INEC had a lot of problems with their haddock staff. A lot of people were fired from the commission, you know, because of the activities in the last election and all of that. And even with all the attacks on youth core members and the likes, a lot of things happened, you know. So the truth has to be told, INEC wasn't ready before now. But they've postponed the election to the 18th, you know, that's another one week. So we'll see how that goes, but I still like to call on Nigerians to come out there, you know, to vote. And concerning the Beavers and the court ruling yesterday, INEC claims now that it has a server that it has transferred all the materials to. I don't want to, you know, I look at that skeptically because at first, this was the same INEC that claimed they didn't have a server to transport all the materials for the, what's it called in 2019 all the materials from the card reader all of a sudden it claims it has a server now secondly the locus classicus in the case of beavers has been the Osho court case where INEC gave a certified true copy of one result of the server what happened on the server to APC which was not complete and gave another one to PDP a month after and claim that Oh, it materials are not finished transporting at that point in time. So, and when you also look at the lawyers in this case, the lawyers are saying that from the Oshu case, they learned that INEC should give them the fiscal right to the Beaver's machine itself to be able to check it themselves rather than just give them a certified true copy. Because this was the same INEC that gave two different certified true copies. So if their objectivity was suspect in the case of Oshu, why should we trust INEC now? INEC has been able to lose, you know, their credibility to a great extent. And this is the fact on ground. These are empirical facts on ground. So the truth has to be told. We will look at this. We'll look at it in the coming days. Probably, maybe the other uh, uh, lawyers from all parties will go to court. And when they go to court, they will even be able to challenge the facts that uh, INEC, you know, uh, uh, 
is even getting a chance to reconfigure their beavers because they're going to touch the evidence in their case. And these are the empirical facts, you know, I'd, I'd like to state, you know, the fact that INEC, a lot of people, international community is saying they can't be trusted. And the truth has to be told. Any time I speak, I speak to facts. If you have other facts, you can controvert me. But a lot of people, because of their own political biases and leaning, they say, oh, you're not objective, be neutral. What the heck is being neutral? Fact is commonsensical. It's as simple as that. I present the fact to you with common sense. All right? If you have a better argument, controvert my fact with a better argument. I like arguments. I like logic. As a, you're biased. You're, you're, I don't care for any political party. All I care for is the truthfulness of the Nigerian process and being in the vanguard of having a solid democracy in our country. And that's all I stand for. And I don't care for any political party because I see the political class as one. So these are just the facts of the matter I have stated empirically. So this is just to give you guys an update. So that is it. Thank you so much for having time to listen to the end of this video. See you on my next video. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly do. Subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification button, and do me a favor, share this video. See you on my next video.